All right, today we're going to talk about time-dependent problems. And transient problems. So if you remember in the first half of the class when we derived all the conservation equations and coupled poor elasticity and all that, those were PDEs, partial differential equations, right? But then when we got into started talking about how to solve these in the computational side, we always just let the time dependence go to you know zero and assume quasi-static or steady state. And so that reduced them to ordinary differential equations, and we use the finite element method to solve those ordinary differential equations or boundary value problems. Right? So now, you know, what should we do if we don't want to do that? If we want to solve the transient problem, the full transient problem, if we want to keep the time dependence, right? So there's two choices. Uh, one is coupled approach. And in this approach, you're, you would assume that your solution that you're seeking is a function of x and t, where x could be a vector. So there's a spatial dependence and a time dependence. And we're going to assume a, an approximate solution, uh, that's also a function of x and t. And then we're going to approximate that with some unknown uj. And the shape function is actually going to be a function of x and t, right? So this is really no different when we, when we develop these shape functions. This is really no different than if we develop shape functions in higher dimensions, like x, y, right? We just treat t as another dimension and we develop the shape functions that way, right? So we're assuming some continuity in time into the future, and then, and then we do that, okay? So this is the fully coupled approach, and it's not that common, and in fact, it's not that useful. It sort of adds unnecessary complication because, you know, the reason we use finite elements is because we're solving boundary value problems. In other words, we want to know what the solution is across the entire domain uh, subject to some in conditions, you know, some, some boundary conditions. Well, in, when we solve time dependent problems, it's usually not that we know the states of something at two places in time. It's usually we know the initial, you know, we have some initial velocity, some initial displacement, some initial field, and then we see how things evolve due to that, right? It's not often that we say, you know, we know at time one and time t, and we want to approximate the solution in between based on some interpolation. That's, that's not often, right? So it's usually that we have an initial value problem in time. And so usually for those, we treat it as separable or de decoupled. So how many of you have had a course, a graduate course in partial differential equations? PDEs. Yeah. So if you remember, it, you know, there's about three PDEs that you can solve in closed form, and all of them use separation, uh, you know, separation of variables. So we assume that the solution x of t is separable, and we're going to approximate it as uj is a function of time, and nj is a function of space. So we're going to use the same shape functions that we would use for, for standard finite elements. That's going to convert our PDE into an ODE in time, and then we'll use uh, central difference. So, or, you know, we'll use some, we'll, we'll talk about how you, we, we uh, can discretize in time. One of those ways would be like a central difference method. We'll talk about that. <coughs> These are, uh, this assumption is absolutely valid when the solution is separable, like if you could actually solve it in closed form, or you have some function of time and some function of space. Right? Uh, this is a common technique if you, if you have a course in PDEs, is you know, separation of variables. So 
For these decoupled formulations, it's basically a two-step process. A spatial approximation with finite elements, and then a temporal approximation. And you know, we basically use some form of finite differences. So in a finite difference method, you should know this, but you know, we approximate some derivative as some increment. And then the choice of how we choose to define these increments defines the finite difference method. Okay. And so before we actually get into the actual techniques for solving, you know, that we'll use to solve the PDEs we encounter in these kind of initial boundary value problems and the types of physics that we've talked about in this class, I want to talk about something really generic for a second. 